All right, welcome to episode number three in our tutorial series for how to build a web interface for the TR1. Uh, we are, so far, we're still working on the server back end, and we've got uh, a few more files to create on the back end so that we can use those routes to communicate with different things on the front end. The front end can send some commands to the back end. Uh, we also need to set up some web sockets so that we can pass data from the server and have a continuous stream of updated state for what's going on on the actual server side so that the client side can be updated of that. We need to build out the entire web interface. What you see here in front of you is not how far we've gotten so far in the tutorial series, but is how far I've gotten outside of the tutorial series, and we're still trying to catch up with me. Uh, I mentioned last time uh, a like, drop-down menu, like what you see here. Uh, this is what I have in mind, right, where you can go in, uh, look around. Let's say there's a table right here in front of me. You can click here, click, like, pick up. If there's something on the table, you can click that. Uh, I've got it printing out here at the bottom. You know, <laughs> eventually it's going to actually drive over there, pick it up, whatever. You know, I want to work on where we can click on in the screen here. I have some different interface kind of stuff to make the uh, looking around and things like that easier. Um, yeah, you know, examine, cancel, all that kind of stuff. So we're working towards this still. Uh, and yeah, today's video, let's just talk about what we're going to work on today. Uh, let's go clear out of that. And um, yeah, so let's see here. Okay, now we are currently in the, uh, let's see, we are in the list section of our CMDS class, which is inside of our command class, which returns a route for the router for our server inside TR1 Control Center TUT. So we're going to create a few more files here, just a few basic files so that we can get up and running on this list section. I can we, um, So that we'll have some basic functionality for the server side so the front end can ask the back end to do some different stuff. And uh, a little out of focus there. Let's see, that's a little better. Okay, so I'll move me over here. And uh, yeah, we should be ready to just go ahead and get started. So I think, yeah, only four files that I need to make here. Let's change directory into our current package that we're working with. So we're gonna go server, router, commands, Yes, list, and we're going to just create a few files. We're going to do go to position.js. Uh, we're going to do get joint states.js. Whoops, we need to do touch. We're going to do touch drive.js. This is going to be the actual command where you can send, like, you know, uh, I can't remember specifically how we set this up. I think it's actually just. Uh, no, it's XYZ. So we, yeah, we can send a vector for go this direction with this magnitude, and also we can add rotations. We can add, we can, we send just like basic I want to go that way kind of commands. The router is going to calculate how to take the basic idea of where do you want to go and actually convert that into effort commands that we send to each individual motor so that the base drives in that direction. Uh, and then one last one, we're going to do touch say.js, um, and eventually, that one's not complete yet, but eventually you're going to be able to send on the front end here where you can like type in say uh, what, I don't know, say hello there or something like that, and uh, the back end will take that and will like you see, on the actual robot, what's a little different is that this is just the simulation. But on the actual robot, the idea would be that you're far away from the, the robot itself. Let's say you're off on vacation, your robot is at home, okay? You want to see what's going on at the home, maybe have, uh, you know, like a house sitter or something like that. I don't know. And um, 
You want to be able to look around and communicate with the house sitter via the robot. You can you can type in your say commands and it's going to actually speak through there. You know, eventually we can set up a microphone and all that kind of stuff. So, you know, that's just the kinds of ideas that I have right now. Um, but that actually isn't implemented yet, mostly because we're just working within the simulation. We will get there. Um, all right. Um, so there, we've, we've just created our files. Now we actually need to go in and program it. Let's start with some of the low-hanging fruit first, if uh, we do not mind. OK. <clears throat> Drag this over here. And these are the files that we still need to create. Uh, we created our look.js file uh, just the other day. And uh, you can see this is what it looks like. And each one of these commands are going to have to have a path defined and also a route. That's all we need. Um, so, yes, go to position. This is by far the easiest one that we need to do because we're just going to do this dot path equals, whoops, we're going to do module dot exports equals function, uh, uh, which is, it accepts as its argument uh, the commander. Right, this is an actual command. And then we've got the commander, which holds a list of commands. Um, this dot path equals go to position. Okay, and this again, to reiterate, this is, we're gonna be sending post commands from the front end to the back end at, I believe, command. And then by setting the path, we're saying that the path to this is uh, go to position, you know, that's where we're going to post the data. Um, it's going to be right there. Okay. Uh, and then also we're going to define our route, this dot route equals function response uh, or request response. Okay. All we need to do here uh, for this route in particular is just accept the body and pass, or the, the JSON body in the request and just publish that data straight to the ROS topic. Uh, eventually we're gonna worry about like security and things like that. Uh, you know, we, we, we wanna make sure that you're authenticated to actually perform the requests. And this is something that you should only run on your local server. Uh, this is not something you should run uh, just out on the open web. Okay, you should be on a private secure network uh, because I'm now recognizing that if this was running on like just a public server somewhere on your actual robot, that would be bad. We'll go back and rework some of this in the future. Um, so we're gonna use this commander object that we have as our argument for our go to position command. Uh, class, and uh, we're going to use one of the publish or the yeah one of the publishers, uh, Ross publishers, and that's going to be at the go to um, tier one go to position Ross topic, and then we're just going to publish, and the uh, yeah request on body. So again, this you're going to publish data. The route is going to take that data and it's just going to straight plop it into the tier one go to position ROS topic. It's going to publish data there. Uh, we're going to have another node that's going to be listening, obviously, for that data and it's going to uh, uh, do something with that data. This node in particular, the go to position, we're talking about the end effector here. Uh, so you'll be able to send, um, you know, uh, so you, you'll send an XYZ coordinate. Um, for where you want the end effector to go, and this is going to use move it um, to uh, to figure out uh, all of the inverse kinematics necessary in order to get the end effector to that position. Uh, I already have that built out, uh, so we won't actually be getting into that um, in this video. Uh, how all that works? Um, it's really not too crazy. I mean, it, once you have move it configured for your robot, it's like it's a breeze. Uh, and then we're just going to respond with, um, yeah, um, 
Okay. Okay, so that's it. That's it. Uh, we, you know, we're just going to accept. So we created her out. We're just going to take whatever's in the body, which is going to be a JSON object. Um, it could technically be anything, which is why, again, uh, probably should make sure that this is running, or definitely should make sure this is running on a local um, private network, um, and uh, so that only things that you can trust can actually send data to the server. Um, and then finally, we're going to respond with some joint state, and we're also going to send back a message saying that we're publishing it. Um, you know, we've got your request. We're publishing it. Uh, there you go. Okay, so that's it. Go to position. Done. Let's move on to the next one. Um, we're going to do. Let's do this say here. Um, so, well, let's just we're just going to create the kind of boilerplate here. So it's going to be module exports plus function CDR, uh, and then we're going to have this dot path equals say, um, and then this dot route equals function with the arguments request response. And there we are. Let's go ahead and do automatic indentation. Okay. Uh, yeah. All we're going to do here console.log tr1 said so this is going to log it on the server so we'll be able to actually see that yes it's working um, but we're not eventually we're going to go back and change this and actually do something uh, where we can actually play sound um, on top of that uh, so here we're just going to do request.body.speech text um, so again the body object here is a JSON object, and that JSON object has a property called speech text, which is so we'll need to on the front end whenever we're building this out, we'll need to make sure that we're sending this object with the speech text variable on there, or else you know these aren't going to work properly. And I've got some on the front end, some different ways to check check for that. Um, where we can actually create a list on the front end of all the functions and all the arguments that you have, the you know argument types, the data types for the arguments, and actually make sure that we're sending the right kind of data. But it does all that checking on the front end. It doesn't do it on the back end, um, which is probably where we should move it to long term. But for now, we're just you know we're getting things up and running. Uh, we can craft this into our masterpiece as we go. Okay, and we're just going to respond with uh, states. Just not realizing that's probably left over from a long time ago. Uh, let's just respond with an empty object here. Um, yeah. Okay, so that's our say class. We're done. See, we're flying through these. Uh, again, we did all that work. Uh, from last video so that we can go in here and create new commands, new routes for the commands. We can do all of that. We just create a new file. We literally just go in here, create a new file, make sure we define path, make sure we define route, and we're up and running. You know, uh, yeah, I mean, it's, it's that easy. Um, and that's the advantage of, um, you know, going in and making something you know, adding a bit of complexity to the way we do it so that we have the right abstraction and uh, yeah, we can go in and add this stuff it's super simple. Once we get to the drive class, that's gonna be a little more complicated, but um, it's still gonna work the same kind of way. We're just gonna have to do a bunch of math in order to convert our vector into actual uh, uh, wheel commands. but. We'll get into that in just a second. Okay, so get joint state. So this is a way where you can type, you know, get joint spa states um, into the command line and it's gonna return the joint states to you. Um, okay, so module.exports equals function cmdr. This dot path equals, let's see, what a path we're we using? We're doing, um, so the exact path we're going to use here is get joint st 
updates. This dot route equals function request response. And hang in there. We're almost done with working on this back end. We've got to finally start working on the front end, which is all the fun stuff, in my opinion. Uh, Join states equals. Uh, okay, so this is where we get to use our um, subs class, uh, where we can actually get joint states, and we can get previous message. Okay, so there's a couple different ways we could do this technically, where we could you get you do a request, and, and real quick, let me just go ahead and respond with that response to JSON equals. Okay, we're going to respond with the message json dot stringify joint states. Um, there you go. Okay. Uh, so, uh, last video I'd gotten into what the we, we had this whole like previous message thing, right? Where uh, we we keep track of our subscribers. We can get our subscriber, and any time that the subscriber updates, we're actually updating a, a local variable on that class called previous message, um, so that we can look at what's the last thing that we got from the Ross topic that we subscribe to. Uh, this is a way where we can, you know, if if you call this get joint states um, route, you know. Or, yeah, you, you, you send a command to this get joint states route. We're going to respond with what the joint state of the robot is. Um, you know, we are probably okay with just like whatever the last joint state was. We don't have to sit here and do this asynchronously where we wait for something to get published to the joint states um, because. You know, maybe things are running slowly and it takes a long time. This is just a quick way to just like, you know what, whatever the last like batch of data I got from the joint states Ross topic, just send that over to me. Like, you know, I'm not gonna care so much about like waiting until like when's the next time something gets published. It's like whatever the last thing that was published, like that's good enough. Um, so we have, by doing it, we get the data back more quickly. Um, we can guarantee that something's going to respond here. Uh, and um, we get the simplicity of building this all out synchronously, right? Well, at least this function, what, what all the code that runs in this function. You know, thankfully, you know, the express routes are built asynchronously uh, by default. Um, so it really wouldn't have been crazy to try to build that out there. But this is just an example by keeping track of the, the previous messages. We can, if we want to, build things out synchronously um, in situations like this. Uh, there might be other examples where we we don't want to use stale data, like we, we need to wait until something is published, um, and we definitely have that option to do that as well. But with joint states and, uh, you know, knowing that, like, I don't think we, you know, I don't think we can't think of an example of where like we would have to wait until like the next batch of data that gets published to Ross to the joint states Ross topic uh, would be super critical. So like for the time being, this is good. Maybe we change our mind in the future and we do refactor this code, but you know for now that's fine. And there we go. So get joint states. We we can go in. We can create. If you have an idea for like okay, I need to communicate. The, you know, I need to be able to send some command and maybe get a response from the server or like, you know, send some command to the server and like the server does some stuff. Um, and then just like the server just responds like, okay, like I, I, I executed that, we're good. You get an idea for that, like you just add a new file here to the list and uh, you're good to go. Okay, now for the crazy one, the drive class, um, or the drive command. Okay, so this, it's not too bad, but there's a little bit of math, right? Um, uh, you know, so I, I've, I've actually, had, the longer we've been a company, I've become more and more critical on engineers here knowing uh, what, knowing some basic like geometry, you know, algebra, some trigonometry. You know all the basic uh, vector manipulation, matrix manipulation, all that kind of stuff. Um, tr 
typically with programming, like if you're doing like web development and you're just building like basic websites or something, like you really don't need to know that much math. Like you, you have to have the brain that's able to learn math um, because, you know, programming is so pedantic where you have to typically describe things so explicitly. Um, but anyway, uh, the reason I've gotten more strict about knowing your math with you know engineers here is that uh, you this is an example of that where you've got just a basic like you know I want to drive in that direction well how you describe that direction is actually with a vector and then how do you translate that vector into actually mo actual motor commands that you send to the wheels themselves you know do you want this motor to be going you know, a little bit faster than this one over here. And it gets a little bit more complicated too because we've got an omnidirectional base with four wheels that have these like roller things over them so that if you, if they all are like turning that way, uh, the net effect is that the robot moves that way, but you can also add some like rotation into it. It gets really complicated. Um, but if you know some basic vector and matrix man manipulation, you can, uh, pretty simply calculate what the wheel position should be based on the desired vector. Um, so math, it's wonderful. It shows up, you know, this kind of stuff shows up in robotics all the time, especially the lower you get to the actual hardware, the, ne the necessity to know this kind of math is, uh, well, that's where you find the necessity. Um, if all the low-level controllers are already built out, i.e. for most of the customers, um, and we'll get better with that in the future. I mean, the idea is that eventually you can program these robots and you can work on just the high level and not need to know all of the low-level math. Um, you know, but the lower you get, the, the, the more this kind of stuff pops up. Uh, okay, all that to say, um, there's some math here. It's nothing, it's nothing crazy. Um, and I'll explain all of this as we go. Um, in fact, there'll be a lot of you out there that'll be watching this and we go, duh, that's how you do it. Um, but I can tell you for me particularly, uh, you know, a year and a half, two years ago when I was, you know, first getting into programming um, some of these low level stuff for, you know, some of the robots here and and you know some of the robots in my free time, I didn't know all of this math um, by heart. I had to go out and learn all of this, and I was very surprised <laughs> by just uh, how much math was required um, to build out some of this stuff. Okay, so this dot route equals function. We're going to do request response, and there we go. Okay. Um, this all right here is just basic boilerplate from what we've already been doing. Uh, we're going to use nj, uh, this numbed uh, js library, which is kind of, if you guys have worked with Python and NumPy, the NumPy library, uh, which is a, you know, it's a library for doing, you know, vector and matrix manipulation and, and making all of that much easier. Uh, this is just basically a JavaScript version of that. Uh, because initially, all this was built out um, in Python. This is the first time I built out uh, this kind of calculator. Okay, so let's talk about what actually gets sent to the server. So we're gonna have x, request.body.x, var y equals request.body.y. Um, Okay, and I'll talk about what this is in just a second. Okay, well, yeah, so these are the, we're gonna have an object, right? You're, you're sending a JSON object to the server, which is this request.body, and you're gonna have defined, the front end's going to define the X, Y, and I'm using W here to describe the rotation, right? Um, so X and Y is just the vector, okay? So if, if this is X, this is y, and then y is just, if we do x0, y1, and that's our vector, 
then that's just going to be straight ahead. You know, that's our desired position, right? Um, and then we can add on top of that some rotation, um, either to the left or to the right, where we can manipulate the uh, wheel commands a little bit. So we can say we want to drive like our desired vectors that way, but also add um, a rotation uh, coefficient you know, into that so that we manipulate the wheels in such a way that it, maybe it turns left or right. Um, you know, same thing. I, I want to turn, you know, like, you know, straight but like 15 degrees off that way a little bit. Well, that can be described as an x and y value of a vector, right? So that's going to be some, you know, I, I don't know specifically off the top of my head what the vector would be there, but, you know, it would be like, you know, y, 1, x, who knows, like 0.15 or something like that. Um, okay, so vector equals, so here we're going to use uh, num.js and we're going to define an array just like you would with uh, numpy. Okay, let's um, also put in here um, what actually, let's talk about what actually is going to get published here. So again, we've got our your input, which is the desired vector, um, your output is going to be what's the wheel commands. So cmdr.pubs.get. So we're going to need to get each of the um, uh, ROS topics where we can publish uh, the wheel positions. The controller dot so controller effort um, joint base wheel front left command and this is dot publish uh, and then we're going to send data which is going to be like motor front left or something like that okay now we're actually going to do that for each of the four wheels so now we can just change this to front right yeah back left back right update these, back left, back right. Okay, so this is our input up here, this is our output. So we now we just need to figure out what's the math in order to uh, translate the input into the output. Nothing too crazy here. So, we're gonna be doing some cosines and sines um, uh, so one thing I figured out about omnidirectional bases, in ours in particular, we've got four wheels, right? Uh, and they're offset by like 45 degrees on each corner of the base. What I realized is if you take, so again, it's like this, but if you take that and rotate it, 45 degrees, rotate the base, if you could, rotate the base 45 degrees without rotating uh, the actual robot itself, you would have, so that if you wanted to drive in the Y direction, these wheels here would just be the X variable, uh, or it would be the Y variable. If you wanted to drive in the Y position, right, these wheels would be the Y variable of our vector. And these wheels over here would be our x variable of our vector. So that these wheels would can go left or right, okay? And these wheels would go forward and backwards, just like the y and the x. And uh, then the math there is really easy. Like you pretty much just take the x value, give it to these wheels, take the y value, give them to these wheels, and boom, your math is already done. Well, the difference is that our base is at a 45 degree angle, so it's not that simple. But if we can rotate for the sake of the math, we're going to um, go ahead and do that with the um, wheels, and then we're going to rotate it. Yeah, then we're going to rotate uh, that the 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 output vector 45 degrees. Uh, then we can actually get the exact commands for the wheels themselves. Um, 
and, and, and that'll, that'll make sense what we're doing here in just a second. Um, so we're going to, uh, first we're going to define a magnitude of what the um, input vector is. Um, equals math dot square root okay okay so now here we're going to define that offset right what's the angle offset um, so that's just going to be math dot, and since we're working in radians, it's math dot pi divided by four. Um, okay, so again, what we're doing is we're, we're creating a rotation matrix to multiply our input vector. Um, so we, we can rotate our input vector by um, uh, 45 degrees, basically. Uh, and then we can use that to send that data to the motors and like, it, it makes it pretty simple, and, and, and we'll we'll end up adding some um, uh, some checking to make sure our output is not you know oh, like make sure that we're like capping our output between like negative one and positive one, um, and uh, we're also going to use our uh, our w our rotation coefficient here in a not too clever way, um, but. Uh, We'll get to that in just a second. Okay, so uh, this is just basic um, putting together a rotation matrix here. Oops. And then our rotation matrix. I'm actually going to turn this fan on. Um, okay, so if you've ever worked with rotation matrices before, this would look somewhat familiar. Uh, if you haven't, you might be wondering what the heck is going on here, but uh, that's for another video um, at another time. Okay, and then our output is our, uh, let's see, so our output is we're going to do the dot um, what do they call it? Dot matrix multiplication. The dot product, I think, is what it's called. We're going to do the dot product of the vector and the rotation matrix to get a rotated vector so we can use that for the actual wheel commands. Okay, vector dot dot and then rotation matrix. X equals output and then um, NumJS just returns uh, like kind of a vector object that where you can do uh, this to basically get the variables in that vector, um, which just translates to output dot get zero is our x and output dot get one is our y. Okay, great. So. Um, oops, this is the other way. Equals motor back. Equals X. Okay, so this is exactly what I was talking about. The motor front left is going to be a rotated input vector. Uh, in the, the the y variable in our rotated input vector, and the motor back left is our y variable in the rotated vector. Our motor front right is our x variable, and our motor back right. Uh, okay. Um, motor front left, motor back left, motor front right, motor back right. Okay. Um, Yes. Uh, let me make sure that's right. Front right, back left. Right. 
Um, okay, great. Okay, so now we're going to um, add our uh, rotation coefficient here, which is W, into all of this mess um, so that um, I'm, I'm, I think I'm a little confused why this works now that I'm double thinking everything. Um, it might be because uh, some values end up being because this might be forward here, but the forward command for this motor might be like this. So I think um, if these were both forward, uh, anyway, let's not get into that. Um, <laughs> it's been a while since I've worked with this, so um, it might I might be overthinking this a little bit too much. Okay, so now we're just going to add our um, rotation variable into what the actual output values are for our motors um, so that uh, we can um, yeah so that we can rotate the wheels uh, and, and the reason I've done this is because you might want to go this direction but you might also want to go that direction and turn to the left a little bit so that way you can just slowly like go around like that so you don't have to go all the way down rotate go all the way down that way have a little bit more fluid behavior um, Motor front left equals motor front left minus W. So again, we're just adding this value. Um, nothing, nothing real profound here. Nothing too fancy. Um, motor back right equals motor back right minus W. Um, <clears throat> all right. Just a few more things here that we're going to check to make sure that our output magnitude isn't too big um, and that we're sending, um, yeah, let's see. Yeah, so we're going to make sure that the magnitude of our um, total vector is not higher than the actual value that we're sending to the motor. So that that way, and, and we don't really have a great way since we're using a keyboard, you know, just on off buttons uh, to control the speed of this. Um, but we do have, a, you know, an Xbox joystick where we use this kind of math uh, to um, drive the base around. And uh, you want to be able to fine tune, like if, if you want to slow down a little bit, um, in turn, you want to be able to make sure that the, the output of the uh, of all of this math here is scaled to what the actual magnitude of the input vector is, so that we're more closely um, having the, the output more closely matches what you're actually wanting to do on the input. You know, vectors have a magnitude. We want to account for that. Um, And I'm actually just going to copy and paste all this in, and I can just talk talk about what it is. Um, so again, we're just taking uh, what's uh, okay here. We're actually defining what the output magnitude is, and then we are um, scaling everything to what the um, magnitude of the vector is. Um, we're scaling each of these down based on what the uh, ratio between the magnitude and the output magnitude is. We're also capping the output magnitude 1.4142 and then we just publish it along there. Okay, <laughs> how are we doing for time? 40 minutes! Dang! <laughs> um, holy cow, these videos always take so much longer than I, than I anticipate. Um, okay, so we've got all of the math there. Let's uh, let's go ahead and just run our server and make sure everything runs properly. Um, let's see, so we're going to do ROS run tier one control center tut. Uh, snow, let's see, tier one. Tier one control. 
controls center, the chairs. Um, let's see. Um, it's saying we don't have. Let's let's change directory. So I'm I'm gonna try to run the server and make sure all of this um, executes properly and we have everything defined um, adequately. Uh, so that we're not going to run into a bunch of issues later after we've already built all of this. Um, and, and, uh, yeah. Um, oh, man. Um, so option. Set up a bash source. Bash workstation. Okay, it's saying maybe we don't actually, maybe we haven't created our server. No, there it is. Tier 1 control center.js. I wonder what I'm doing wrong. Okay, tier 1 control center dot tier 1 control center.js. Is that executable? CD source tier 1 control center dot less. It may not be. chmod plus x tier one control center js and there we go okay cool so we've got listening on port 8080 um great let's do i mean might as well just keep going you know these videos are going to be uh like an hour long each um hope you guys are enjoying these so far uh and are staying around uh, okay so let's Let's create our front end. We've got our views. Um, I think, uh, so we are listening on 8080. Let's go back and run that there. Uh, and we're gonna reopen the server. And I think it should, um, let's see, failed to load resource. Yes, okay, so we've got everything here. Now we just need to add um, our uh, JavaScript files for the front end. Let's go ahead and do that. Uh, let's just add them and um, so we're going to create a file under client called JS. That's where our JavaScript stuff is going to sit um, and we're going to, um, let's see, let's close out of there. We're going to cd into client, uh, cd into JS. We're going to do touch. Let's see, we're going to create all of our files for the front end here that we're going to use. So we're going to touch uh, functions.js, touch map.js, menu.js, robot.js, sketch.js, uh, JS, JS, and viewer. Touch viewer. Okay, there are all of our files. If we reload, let's see, Ross run. Now yeah, we'll go up here. Run our server, reload, no errors. Okay, so it's able to find all of our uh, files that we have here. We're going to open up sketch.js. Let's just go ahead um, and. Yeah, let's just go ahead and create just a very, very basic p5.js um, sketch file. Okay, so we're gonna, uh, with p5.js, um, which we will be getting into probably in the next video, some of, you know, kind of the basic functionality, if you're not familiar with that, um, <clears throat> you define a setup and a draw function. Um, if you remember from a few videos ago, we, we have um, in our, uh, view, um, let's see, so our views, so we're using uh, right here the p5.js library right in our front end. <clears throat> um, so we're going to uh, do um, create canvas and I think we'll probably just go ahead and uh, get this set up, make sure it's running and I and just, just give you a little bit of hope for the next video that we are in fact going to start doing some front end stuff and then in the next video we'll really take a deep dive into all of this so um, 
we're going to actually create a canvas, but create canvas takes two arguments, um, your, your width and your height. Um, so we're gonna do canvas width and we're gonna create some variables here, canvas height, uh, and we're gonna describe those up here. Canvas width equals, and we're just gonna set this to uh, whatever the window size is. And uh, we're gonna do minus five, make sure that uh, we're not creating the, the overflow scroll bars. Canvas height. Whoops, I think that should be inner width. Yeah. Okay, so we've created a canvas. That technically is all we need to do with the setup. And uh, we can do just background zero, which is black. We can do that there. And this will actually draw on the front end a canvas. Boom, like that. So now we can start adding things to, uh, to this. Um, you know, p5.js, it's, it's awesome. It's awesome for building uh, front end game kind of stuff like this. You know, you can draw a rectangle. We can put that at, uh, you know, let's see, put that at 50, 50, and we'll have that be 100 uh, in the width and 200 in the height. We can do that and like, just draws a rectangle. Like, you know, we're gonna be using this kind of stuff all over the place to just draw things wherever we wanna draw them. Uh, we can use all of the, you know, events in JavaScript for like, you know, where the mouse position is. Uh, yeah, it, it, just to make a very clean, um, intuitive, you know, responsive interface for the front end um, where we're going to draw everything out. And you've already seen a little bit of what, what how far we've gotten. And uh, there, I can tell you, you know, I've built tons of games. Um, using p5.js and it is a fun library um, for anybody that wants to learn programming and learn JavaScript like that is the place to start in my opinion okay so we've got <laughs> just a very basic front end we've got a server that is at least like compiling and it's not throwing any errors um, we'll get into testing We'll get into creating the front end in the next video. We'll get into testing all of the commands that we've created um, just now. We'll get into setting up our ROS launch file so that we're loading gazebo, we're loading all of our dependencies, we're putting stuff into the parameter server that we need um, so that we can actually like put the robot in there, draw it, drive it around, create or uh, you know, run commands and stuff like that. Like we are finally getting into some of the, you know, nitty gritty of what we've got going on here. Thanks for sticking around for the last two videos, by the way. Uh, yeah, maybe, maybe, uh, you know, maybe that was fun for you. Um, I hope it was, uh, but definitely the next couple of videos are going to be super fun. So please stick around for that. If you have any questions at all, leave them in the comments. Don't forget to check out uh, the links in our description for, um, where you can find the TR1 if you're not already a customer, if you don't already have one. Um, those are shipping out this month, which is fantastic. Uh, the first orders that we've got, they're shipping out. They're going to be in the customer's hands um, late this month, early next month. Uh, and yeah, super excited. Um, let me know what you guys think. Let me know if you have any questions, and I'll see you in the next video.